So give us a snapshot on this, and we'll put up a bar chart actually showing where revenues come from, basically. But you're a bit different from the Amazons and the Microsofts. It's not so much the server farms, it's more the services. Well, I, it, so we believe that the world of cloud is a hybrid, multi-cloud world. And it has to be open and it has to be secure. And by hybrid, we mean that companies will operate across private and and public cloud. And by multi-cloud, we mean every company is going to operate in multiple clouds. Actually, our surveys indicate that already three-fourths of companies are on five clouds or more, and soon 98% of companies are going to be on multiple clouds. So to operate in that environment, you need offerings that can go across these clouds, and that can go across both the private and the public world, and that's the nature of the offerings we are bringing out. So this basically is a translator across clouds? Is that <laughs> overly simplistic? Well, uh, so the multi-cloud manager, which is the first one, really allows you to deploy your applications on any cloud. We already deploy, uh, deploy across Amazon, Red Hat, our own public cloud, as well as on-premise, leveraging Kubernetes and clusters and all the open technologies that the world loves. So, it, and it stands out to me because we look at, say, the infrastructure of cloud. IBM uh, is far behind the competitors like an Amazon and a Microsoft. So do you view this move as uh, defensive or offense? Offensive. So we believe, so, so if you look at large enterprises, they're only about 20% of their journey into cloud. And then you step back and say, why is that so? Why is it not faster? Mm -hmm. It is that it's actually because they all operate in multiple clouds, they need technologies that can help them go across these clouds in a way that they can manage. And so coming out with these technologies, we believe will accelerate the adoption of cloud and will allow these companies to do it for their secure, mission critical applications. Who's your competition for doing this? I mean, does Amazon provide this service? Does Microsoft provide it? Is somebody else? Uh, so the, the pure public cloud players like Amazon and Google, to the best of our knowledge, do not provide these at all. I think that uh, there are some others who might be uh, coming after this, but it's pretty minor. I think that uh, enterprises and us technology providers are waking up to hybrid, but we believe that we have a leg up in terms of the technologies that we have just brought to market. How do you charge for this? Is this software as a service, or how do you do this, licensing? As, as clients would like. So if you run it on the cloud, you pay by the drink. If you want to run it on your premise, then you pay for it uh, as software. <laughs> uh, when I think of IBM, I don't think of cloud. How do you change that perception? Well, if you look at our revenues, we are up there, right? I mean, like over $18 billion if you look at the trailing 12 months in revenue. When I think about it, I think <laughs> old school, blue chip, they make chips. Like, I, I think of it in, 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 in this kind of scenario where they provide services, et cetera. How do you change that? For Actually, uh, so, so, so you got to change that by looking at what our clients are doing. So if you look at uh, whether it's banks like Lloyd's and Westpac who go on their cloud journey with IBM, whether you look at American Airlines and Hertz and what they do for their mission critical apps, including rebooking of people during storms, et cetera. It is doing all that with our clients. We are not a consumer company, so you're not going to see us directly bring a service mm -hmm. like Search or a productivity app uh, with our name on it. Well, our role is to really empower other enterprises, governments, et cetera, to bring their technologies and, uh, and their touch to consumers directly. How, how do you see this market? How big is it? What's the growth rate? I'm talking about the market, specifically about the, the cloud translator, as I'm calling it. That part of service rather than the basic cloud services. So I believe that that is a fundamental part of uh, hybrid and multi-cloud. And if you look at those two combined, the ultimate uh, market there is going to be over a trillion dollars by by in the next three years. So if you look at that growing at uh, double digits in there, and it's a critical enabler of the total market, it'll then allow us to claim our fair share of that market because it's a it's a highly accelerating market today. It's uh, today it's uh, sitting about at half that total today. And what is driving it at this point? Is it AI? Is it artificial intelligence? Is this clamor for the cloud? So AI is definitely the single biggest driver of it because of the data that is getting unlocked. So if you look at the amount of data that's being produced, we believe that only 20% of data gets any value. So deriving value from all that data requires a cloud and then artificial intelligence to do it because you can't have enough people pouring through it running analytics. And that is in turn the biggest driver, the single biggest driver of cloud technologies. What's the biggest risk that you see? in the next 12 months? Cybersecurity. Tell me. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so cybersecurity has reached a point where it's no longer just a hacker or a kid in a basement. It's organized crime. Uh, the, the amount of impact from cybersecurity is about $2 trillion today, we believe. And 80% of that is driven by organized crime. So in order to protect yourself from that and get away from the plethora of today, like the average company may have 40 vendors, 80 tools, and how do you bring it together? So back on the theme of open, you've got to integrate across all of these. And having an open security platform in turn that goes across this, 
that allows you to go across multiple clouds and that leverages AI to unlock value from the data is sort of the fundamental that we are after and we want to bring to our clients. Uh, we're together here the day after Paul Allen passed away. Uh, and uh, we've, from everything you've said, we've come a long way from MS-DOS days with Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Just like, what a place like actually from Kai, Kai Fu Lee. He's a big venture capitalist who's big in AI about Paul Allen's contributions to artificial intelligence. Well, uh, he's uh, hired one of my friends, uh, Oren Etzioni, mm -hmm. who's one of the best people in AI, um, brilliant researcher. Uh, we went to school together, good friends, we did, we're, um, and also doing excellent work. Um, and he had about 70 excellent people working on research, uh, working on research to be open for positive benefits of humanity. And I wish uh, there were more people who would support AI in this manner. So you can see what Kai Fushi Lee had to say. That he's really, Paul Allen was for an open pursuit of AI. Uh, look, uh, Paul Allen is a, is, a, is a god figure almost in our industry from the early days of the PC, but then going on from there to his philanthropic work around both brain science and artificial intelligence and his funding of those things. And he was all for open, but he was also for advancing the science and for bringing this vision of computing uh, home. And the people he has hired and the work that he has done through the Paul Allen Institute, I think is certainly, is certainly great work, and for the Pacific Northwest at that. Mm -hmm. Is there another Paul Allen out there? Oh, I'm 100% sure. I think that when we look at some of the work that's going on at the top universities, when we look at some of the work that is going on, for example, at Montreal or Toronto or MIT or Yale, I think a lot of the people there uh, are there. I'll, I'll hesitate from putting names in the table because then the ones that I don't name will always wonder why <laughs> they're not on the list. Would the next Paul Allen go to work at IBM? Absolutely. I think sure? <laughs> you sure? Because I mean, he started out just mom and pop, right? Um, I, because when you look at some of our researchers who win MacArthur Awards, who do things like homomorphic encryption, who work on quantum computing, I think absolutely these people do wonderful, wonderful work.